What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new Ryzen 5000 series processors. We're going to be talking about a few different things, including the Zen 3 architecture the processors are based on, all the new processors that launched, why you should and shouldn't be upgrading to them, a comparison of where Intel and AMD processors match up today, and what we can expect from both of them. Let's get started. Before we jump in, I just want to remind everyone that the gaming PC giveaway I'm doing is still up and running. The winner is going to be announced in a video at the end of the month, and to enter all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and like the video. I'll link the PC in the description if you want to check it out. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the new AMD 5000 series processors. A total of four new processors were launched. The Ryzen 9 3950X with 16 cores and 32 threads and a max boost clock of 4.9 GHz. The Ryzen 9 5900X, which is the new flagship, with 12 cores and 24 threads with a max boost clock of 4.8 GHz. The Ryzen 7 5800X, with 8 cores and 16 threads and a max boost clock of 4.7 GHz. And finally, the cheapest of the four, the Ryzen 5 5600X, with 6 cores, 12 threads, and a max boost of 4.6 GHz. The 5950X is priced at $800, the 5900X is priced at $550, the 5800X is priced at $450, and the 5600X is priced at $300. If you're familiar with the 3000 series pricing, you'll realize that the 5000 series is priced $50 higher on all the processors with the exception of the 5600X. And even more importantly, they are priced $50 higher than the comparable Intel processors. We'll talk about Intel a bit later in the video. All right, so let's talk about the architecture. AMD is claiming to have squeezed out an additional 19% improvement on instructions per cycle, or IPC, in the 5000 series processors. A lot of this improvement is thanks to the changes they've made to their architecture. In the previous generation, each die had four cores and had 16 megabytes cache. And if you had an eight core processor, you just had two of these dies. They would communicate with each other through the infinity fabric. If you had a 12 core, you would have three of these dies, and so forth. This year, they've done away with this. All eight cores are on the same die and have access to the entire 32 megabytes cache. This makes a huge difference considering all cores can now communicate directly to each other, and more importantly, access the entire cache. And that significantly reduces the latency, which is great for gaming performance. Before we talk about why you should or shouldn't be upgrading, let's take a look at what you'll need to get started with the 5000 series processors. For example, you're going to need an X570 or B550 motherboard for now, and in some time January, the B450 boards will get a BIOS update to make them compatible. The X570 and the B550 will still be the preferred motherboards according to AMD. I'll link a few options in the description if you want to check them out. And since this is the last AM4 processor, more than likely you'll need to upgrade your motherboard again when we see the next generation of AMD processors. Probably sometime next year. So if you're somebody who upgrades every few years, you can upgrade now and not have to worry about it. But if you're somebody that upgrades every single year to the newest chips, you'll have to worry about replacing your motherboard again in a year. Another thing that everyone has on their mind is whether they should wait for Intel's new processor coming out in 2021 which is the perfect segue to our next section. Where's Intel in all of this? Intel has been sitting on the processor throne for so long, they don't know what competition feels like anymore. AMD, with the launch of the Ryzen processors, promised that they would be competing at the highest levels of performance. And staying true to their promise, AMD has spent a lot of time, money, and resources trying to catch up to Intel. And with the launch of the 5000 series, they finally have. Intel, on the other hand, hasn't been doing that, despite the fact that arguably they have more resources on hand. For example, they're still on the 14 nanometer design, and even their upcoming Rocket Lake processors are still going to be 14 nanometer. While AMD, of course, has moved on to 7 nanometer, and the next ones they unveil might be 5 nanometer. In early 2021, at best, Intel is going to gain back the slight edge that they had on AMD, and at worst, they will be somewhere between 10 to 20% behind in performance. Either way, AMD is trending up and Intel's trending down. The next two or three years are going to be really exciting for everyone because we finally have a real competition on our hands and it's only heating up. All the processors and motherboards we talked about are gonna be linked in the description below. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. You might just win a gaming computer. I have a few exciting PC builds coming up with the new 5000 series processors. Let me know in the comments below what type of computer I should build with these, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.